Alright, so the world at Ginger back with another video. If you are new here, consider subscribing, come and say hi. Uh, this is the series on Lisbon. It is uh, October 2020. I just thought I'd sit down with a brew and talk to you about my experiences of Lisbon since I've been here for about three months. Um, what I would notice, what I would uh, see straight away from where I'm from in England is how much transport we have here in Lisbon, it's insane, it's crazy. Um, kind of reminds me of Berlin a little bit, um, but then Lisbon, you, you've got so many rental options, you know, with the scooters and the, the actual scooters you can drive on the road, you know, you don't even need to deposit for them, you can just jump on them, you know, they've got helmets included on them, so if you really need to get somewhere and, you know, the taxi's maybe driving around in a circle or whatever, you can you can just jump on one of these apps, which is fantastic, really. Um, but with that said, the public transport, you know, there's uh, trams or uh, buses everywhere, everywhere. You just look on Google Maps and you can see there's stops everywhere. So you you're never really in the middle of nowhere um, unless maybe you go out of the centre. But, but the centre is quite big, so you know, coming from somewhere that has a really small centre but there's a city, it's kind of a bit new to me, I'm like, wow, this place is pretty big. Um, so what else have I noticed? Um, there's, there's a nice mixture of kind of Brazilian, well, I wouldn't say tr traditional Brazilian uh, Portuguese people, um, more of like the, the kind of African uh, descendants, uh, uh, kind of Portuguese people, and then you have a, a nice mix of it's kind of hard to tell where they're from, but they're definitely obviously Portuguese, but um, some groups don't really speak uh, English at all, and then others speak it a bit, and kind of most, probably about 8 out of 10 shops, they'll speak some sort of English, um, which is kind of very bizarre, which, again, it's a little bit like Berlin, a tiny bit, um, but I always try, I always try and speak in Portuguese, because I think it's kind of... Just assuming that people will help you out in English, uh, for me, uh, it's a bit, it's a little bit, a bit, a bit pretentious, a bit rude. Um, what else for Noah's? I mean, of course the weather. I mean, I did hear about the weather and that uh, it never really rains. Uh, tell a lie, it did. It, we didn't have a big storm uh, come from the sea, uh, so it did rain for a few days quite really heavily but it's like kind of a one-off but um, I've done a bit of research into it because it's becoming like October, November, December and where I work uh, in England is you know we have these daily meetups and they live in England they're, they're talking about oh, you know it's grey and it's dark and it's just England um, and, it, and it really makes me think you know I wonder what it is like in winter here in Portugal um, so I did some research into it really looked at some previous videos of people trying to get a sense of the vibe and you know what it doesn't actually change that much because of where it's situated because it's right on the south of Portugal now inland uh, Portugal it does snow because there is a, a ski resort further up north so more inland it gets colder um, and Porto as well apparently that gets a bit of cloud so but because we're on this side and we're kind of I guess we're closer to uh, Africa yeah it doesn't really change it's very refreshing it's like oh blue sky again oh it's actually anyway like today yes it is uh, it's been a bit cold overnight uh, but when I say cold I would say 11 degrees uh, and that's the coldest it's been since I've been here and you know every day it's been 20, 30, 40 uh, degrees so coming from England where we're used to like 5 degrees nothing it's interesting that I can I, I think uh, this is honest, honest thing, right? In the space of three months, I've worn my coat that I have, which is quite a light coat, uh, twice. Uh, once, once today, because, um, well, I think once today because I didn't want to carry my bag, so I put my phone in my pocket in my coat, and I didn't want to put it in my jeans. Um, and I thought it might be cold, but it wasn't, so I took it off and put it in my bag. <laughs> 
um, which I just then decided to take with me anyway, which kind of defeated the objects of wearing the coat. But um, yeah, so I've worn my coat twice in three months. Um, one of those times I, I went running in the storm that I mentioned. Um, so I thought I'd take a waterproof coat just to be sure, uh, just to be certain, uh, certain, certain of what, um, just to be, uh, you know, protected from the rain and stuff. But uh, yeah, I had a, I've had a lot of people saying to me, "You have shorts on," or I have like you know like three quarter pants on and t shirt. They're like, "How are you not cold?" I'm like, "I'm from England, of course." I think I think some people think I'm from Scotland. Uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting when they, uh, I reckon it's just the end, the ginger hair, but anyway, so the weather, amazing, it's predictable, it's nice, uh, and I've noticed that uh, places, all these venues, all these bars, all these uh, restaurants, all these things to do, are open a lot, lo uh, a lot later in the evening, which for me, coming from England, where everywhere, well, most places close at, f at five and then don't reopen again, here, a little bit like Spain, they have a little bit of a break, not everywhere, but they have a little bit of a break in the middle of the day, which kind of makes sense during summer. And then they're open again till like 7, 8, 9 at night. And you know, that's everything, uh, you know, the, 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 the shops and things where you can buy things from, like little corner shops, they're open for like 10, 11 at night. Um, so, it's kind of, it's interesting, it's good, it's good, it's good in that way, um, you know, not that I do a lot of clothes shopping and stuff, but like, you know, big chain stores, like H&M and stuff, and Zara, they'll, they're open till nine at night, which is, yeah, not used to it, but, um, yeah, what, what else is there to talk about, yeah, it's just saying, what else is, I mean, there's a variety of things to do, uh, yeah, from everything, every, Everything you can think of, really. There's there's a lot there's a lot to do. I'm still discovering it. Well, the one thing I do like about it, with the availability of transport, is the fact that all the transport's connected by one card. Now I've made a video on that card, and it's down below. <laughs> it's called the Viva card, and I was I was like, ah, so it's like an Oyster card, but you know, in the Oyster card in London, you you have to put money on it. Um, so I was a bit confused, I was a bit like, oh, what is this card? Um, and I finally got myself one about two weeks ago. It didn't take too much, too long to get, really. Um, I think I was just kind of like trying to figure out how to get it. And it's just so much easier to just do things, like, until I, I lose it, of course. But uh, just to have all the travel connected by, you know, one company is it's just so refreshing. It's so refreshing. Yeah, you, know, you can just budget for your travel and just one payment every month and just carry this one card around bank. Again, that's something I'm not used to. We have we do have similar things where I'm from, but it's only to do with um, trains and it'll only be on certain trains, so you have to specify like and I'm talking about England here, so you'd have to specify where you, you're going from, where you're going to, and then you buy like a weekly or monthly ticket. Um, and same with the bus, you can only use it with a certain bus company. So if you're going to a particular place, um, yeah, you kind of have to use one bus company. So there's multiple bus companies. So it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> so the fact that you can just buy this one card, I think, and you can you can pretty much travel. You can travel uh, the one I got for forty euros, and you can travel up to about two and a half hours on the train. It's pretty good value, I would say. Pretty good value. Very very good value actually. Um, thinking back to to England of the train pass, I believe, I think the bus pass for a month would probably be about fifty, and that's only limited to like one bus company um, within. The boundary of the city which is not very big maybe about an hour you can go an hour on the bus and then that's the boundary um yeah anyway i'm kind of rambling on a little bit but um yeah that's just my experience of of being here for three months uh yeah i would just say yeah top tip is 
try not to go out too late at night and and just walk around. I mean, you're not in danger for you know in particular, but like it's like for me, I like to wear my headphones and stuff, and I think. I think it's like anywhere really. If you walk around late at night anywhere, uh, just talking about the tourist areas, you know, just just be aware, you know. Um, and I think it's more of because I don't understand uh, fully understand like Portuguese and what people are saying. Sometimes you know it's easy sometimes to get a bit drawn in by what people say. So it's good to just kind of ignore it or just to be polite to them and just say in Portuguese like you know thanks. Um, you know, anyway, uh, yeah, that's about it, I think, if I think of any, any other things. Oh, that was it, the houses, the houses, before I go, I mean, the video's already 10 minutes long, but the houses, I have noticed, now, I can't say about everywhere, but I have noticed the houses, they, some of them don't have ovens, they'll have hobs, gas hobs, of course, but they won't have a full oven, um, yeah, it's quite interesting because they, they seem to they seem to have you know washing machines and fridges and stuff, but they're not a fan of ovens. And that might be because I'm looking at houses that are you know smaller apartments, perhaps, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I've got an oven, so it's alright, it's good. Um, and I would say that the houses they don't have central heating. Not that I've seen anyway. Um, I'm sure there is central heating somewhere, but kind of with that said, and going back to the weather before I do head off, um, with that said, the weather doesn't actually get that cold, you know. It's a little bit drafty where I am at night because of, uh, I'll show you, I'll maybe show you the, the kind of Harry Potter room uh, soon. So it's like kind of an attic room, um, which I don't use, but the, the tile, uh, there's some gaps in the tiles because the tiles are terracotta tiles. So the draft sometimes blows under the door from that room into my bedroom. So I can get a little bit chilly there, but it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I've, I've you know, living in England uh, with a kind of dodgy window frame for two years. Uh, I've certainly lived in a cold bedroom. And that was with heating as well. But kind of going back to what I was saying, you don't find that people have heating in, in, in Portugal because don't need it, you don't need it, um, yeah, perhaps in winter, but you just get a blanket or a cat or a dog, could do, could do, right, I'm going to go, because it's 12 minutes long, 13, alright, uh, hopefully all that made sense, if it didn't, let me know, if I'm rambling, let me know, if I need to go now, let me know, I'll see you in the next one, um, yeah, world in ginger, boom.